Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you very interesting actuators. Ta -da -da -da. And actually I have two of them. They look the same, but they are different. These actuators are made by this company and they look like really nice actuators because they support the position control, velocity control and also, which is very interesting, torque control. And even in position control it supports multi-turn, which is nice. As you know, several months ago I made video about another MIT Mini Cheetah copy actuator. But this another copy does not support torque control and does not support multi-turn in position control. That is why this actuator should be really interesting for the robotics application. And also for the robotics arm application. I think it's possible to make a robotic arm with this one. Let's look closely at these actuators. Here I put some key parameters for this actuator. And again, I have two of them and this is the smallest one. So it has 48 volts. This is really nice because higher voltage it means that lower current and lower current it means that we can use thinner wires. So for me this high voltage is advantage. It has a planetary gearbox 6 to 1. The peak torque is 24 newton meters and this actuator can be controlled either through CAN or RS 485. But this you need to specify when you buy them. My actuators I work with the CAN bus. The physical dimensions is a 98 millimeters diameter and also the weight is 610 grams. And as I said, it supports multi-turn in position control and also it has the torque control mode. The second actuator is a little bit heavier, it's 730 grams and at the same time it's more powerful, it's 40 newton meter peak torque, which is quite serious value. And today we're going to test both of them, so let's get started. Yeah! So here are our two actuators. The name of this one is RMD X8 and name of this one RMD X8 Pro, like iPhone. And now, first time on my channel, unboxing. It's almost like on the fancy YouTube channels. This is the first one, looks nice. And the second one, this is a really beautiful color. So this is a smaller one, less powerful, and this is a bigger one, more powerful. Let's take them out. So as you can see, it's RMD X8. This is the company which produces it. With these micro switches, you can choose the ID of actuator. And also you can choose either to use or not to use the termination resistor on the CAN bus. This is the output shaft. There is a fixation holes with the thread over here and on the back. And this is the connectors. The yellow big one is for the power supply. The two white connectors are for the CAN bus. So CAN bus in, CAN bus out or vice versa. They are the same. Over here it's difficult to see but there is a RS232 connector. And on top of this white connector there is an LED. Yeah, looks really nice. The second one. So it's black one. From the front it's the same. Here it also looks the same, there is micro switches, the same connectors, but it's a little bit bigger and heavier. Also over here there is a cable switch you would need to connect these actuators. Another huge advantage of these actuators is that from the website of the company you can download a PDF with the manual. And this is actually a well written manual with everything, even with the connections, how you can connect several actuators together and stuff like this. Also you can download the protocol for the CAN bus and protocol for the RS-485. And here it's quite detailed and there is everything explained, like all the commands, like for example multi-motor control command, yeah, and uh, torque current uh, control, etc, etc. And with the help of this manual and protocol I was able to make the Arduino program to run these actuators. And now we're gonna test them. This is an Arduino which I'm going to use. So this Arduino has a CAN bus shield on top of it. This is a CAN bus uh, shield from the Spark Fun. What is good is that this shield has a small joystick over here. Like this we can use it to move the actuator. And this is the output of the CAN bus. So the output goes on this cable. There is a termination resistor for the CAN bus over here. And the second termination resistor is here inside of this heat shrink tube. And this is a connector which will go to the actuator. The program for this Arduino is quite simple and I think you will understand it quite easily. So I'm not gonna talk much about this program. The next thing which we would need is the power supply. 
So this power supply has 48 volts output. And to this output I already connected this wire, which will go to the actuator. Power supply and CAN bus. The Arduino we're going to power up through USB. Power supply is switched on and immediately we see that this LED light up with a green light. Arduino is also on. And so everything is ready for the test. It works, cool. Of course, this is not a maximum speed. I put some low speed for the test. And as you can see, it has a multi-turn support in the position control. Like this, you can add additional reduction stage and have a decent range of motion. So far, everything looks great. Now let's try to connect the second one, the pro version. Power supply, CAN bus. Now let's see how this one works. Oh, great. Again, there is a multi-turn support in the position control and it works perfectly fine. Nice. It's quite silent. Perfect. By the way, through these holes for the mounting, you can see the rotor of the motor. You see? Ah, cool. So now instead of connecting Arduino just to the USB charger, I connected the Arduino to the computer. So like this, I can see the reply of the actuator on the commands which we give to him. So this is an Arduino code. So here we define the joystick, we define some pins. Uh, here we enable the serial, enable the CAN, initialize some pins. And here is the main loop. If we push the joystick up, in this case, uh, the value gain pause is increased by the step value. And this gain pause is actually desired position for this actuator. So afterwards, we send this command to the CAN bus. So in this command, this is the name of the command. This is the desired speed. I put it uh, low just to be safe. And here is the position. So here we send the CAN bus command. If the joystick is pushed down, we do more or less the same. But in this case, we reduce the gain position. We reduce the desired position for this actuator. Again, by the step value. And afterwards, here we send this CAN message. And this part of the code is to receive the CAN message and print it in the serial port. This is how it works. So when I push the joystick, you see the value is changing. And uh, here, so this is a reply of the actuator. So it replies the command A6. 18, this is the motor temperature. 18 means uh, 24 degrees because this is a hex values. So in decimal values, it's 24 degree. This is the torque of the actuator. This is the speed of the actuator. And this is the position measured by encoder. So for example, here, if you look closely, you see that it's decreases D9, D, 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 C, B, A, 9, 8, 7, 6. Yeah, so it works pretty well. Cool. So in our Arduino code, this is the command which we used. So this is actually A6 command. And here we need to specify the spin direction, the speed, and also the position of the actuator. And actuator replies on this command with these values, where we have the command value, afterwards the motor temperature, the torque, the speed, and the encoder position. Exactly what we saw on the computer. It is also possible to move this motor very slowly, like this. You see, you can see the rotor of the motor through these holes. Really nice. Great, I really like it for the moment. So the next, I would like to check the backlash. In order to estimate the backlash of this actuator, I'm gonna do the following. I'm going to fix this actuator and afterwards mount the long arm to the output shaft and look at the play of this arm. So for this, I 3D printed some parts. So this is a plate to which I'm gonna fix the actuator. To the output shaft, I'm going to connect this adapter. And afterwards to this adapter, I will fix this arm. And the base itself, we're gonna fix to this aluminum profiles, which we will clamp to the table. Let's assemble this.
So this is the actuator assembled with the arm. Let's connect the power and also CAN bus. Let's switch on the power supply now. This is our super slow mode. Let's keep it like this, more or less horizontal. So this is a play, probably you can see it. And at the end of this arm, it's around one millimeter. Yeah, I think it's one millimeter. So, so this one millimeter play on the arm, which is a uh, 34.4 centimeters long, the backlash is around 9.99 arc minutes. So it's 10 arc minutes. If we look this backlash from the zero position, from the middle position, in this case, we can say that the backlash is plus minus five arc minute, which is exactly what is stated in the manual of this robot actuator. Up to now, there is no any problems. I rearranged the position of this actuator, so I move it over here. I put this plate and also I put this scale. So like this, I will try to estimate the torque from this actuator. Let's put the scale to the zero. Great. And now let's switch on actuator. So switch on the power supply. And now I'm going slowly lower it. And so the maximum weight, which we saw here is 3.25 kilos and 3.25 kilogram on the 34 centimeter arm gives us 11 newton meter torque. This is a little bit lower than 24 newton meter of the peak torque, but I think this is because the current of this actuator is limited in the firmware. And I know that it's possible to change this firmware because I saw that on the website of this company they have a program for this. But I'm not gonna do this today because for me 11 Newton meter is a very decent torque and I'm very happy with it. Excellent. Now I would like to repeat this procedure for the backlash estimation and for the torque estimation, but with the pro version of the actuator. So I installed the pro version of the actuator instead of previous one. Now let's estimate the backlash. So now I will put the arm horizontally, something like this, and let's measure the backlash. I should say that uh, there is almost no backlash here. I was 100% sure that it's gonna be the same as previous one, but no, the backlash is too small to measure. The play is less than half a millimeter. Now we need to check the torque. To test this more powerful actuator, the pro version, I'm going to use the longer arm. Like this, I have less stress on the scale. This oscillation which you saw is because the PID is not well adjusted for this arm, but this could be fixed in the firmware. So the maximum 1.5 kilos. And so this weight 1.49 kilos on this uh, arm gives the torque of 12.5 Newton meter, which is way lower than the peak torque and not much higher than the torque from the previous actuator, which is a little bit strange. So I have dismounted the arm, here this arm, and I also reprogrammed the Arduino. Instead of position control mode, I put a torque control mode. And now let's see if the torque control mode is working on this actuator. So power on for the actuator. Now the output shaft rotates. Uh -huh. Let's reduce the torque. It's difficult to rotate to another direction, but to this direction, it rotates easily. The same, easy to rotate to this direction and difficult to rotate to the other direction. Haha! -ha. So, the torque control does work. Great! I fixed again the arm to the actuator and I would like to measure the torque again now in the torque mode. Why I doing these measurements in the torque control mode? Because I read in the manual that in the torque control mode there is no limitation on the maximum torque. But there is this limitation in the firmware for the position control. And probably that's why in the position control mode we get this low torque of 12.5 Newton meters. Yeah, something like this. Okay, let's try. So you can see that the weight uh, on the balance is only one gram, so it's almost zero. And uh, so that's why I don't need to take into account the weight of this arm because I put the zero on the scale with the arm. The power is on and let's increase the torque. You see that the value is increasing when I increase the torque. Yeah, 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 stop. Okay, let's calculate the torque. 
So 3.78 kilogram weight on this arm gives the torque of 31.8 newton meters, which is really, really nice torque. Okay, you can say that this is lower than the peak torque stated in the manual, but I should say that I did not push the torque to the maximum, because for me 30 newton meters is a perfect number. For my current applications, I don't need more than this. And this is super, really nice. Today we tested these two beautiful actuators. They perform really well. I'm really surprised how good they are. First of all, we tested the torque and the torque was quite nice. From this biggest actuator we get 30 Nm torque, even more than this. And also they are well built and I really like how they are controlled. I mean, the CAN bus protocol is really nice and is really well developed. For example, when you send the control command, it replies you with some useful information like the torque, speed, the temperature of the actuator. And this is really nice and should be useful. If you need MIT mini Chitak like actuator, I really recommend these ones. This is a cheaper and lighter version. This is more powerful and more heavier version. Just to be clear, I was not paid to make this review. I bought this actuator myself with my money. So this opinion is my own opinion. And so the summary. Both actuators are super great. They work with 48 volts. They have a planetary gearbox inside with a ratio 6 to 1. The peak torque of the RMD X8 actuator is 24 newton meters and they can be controlled either through the CAN bus or RS485. But you need to specify this when you buy in this actuator. My actuator I control them with the CAN bus. The smallest actuator have this weight. It supports multi-turn in the position control and it also supports the torque control. The pro version of the actuator is a little bit heavier, but it also have higher torque. And what is important is that this actuator have clear documentation on the website, so you can download this documentation and you can check if this actuator is good for your application. We did some tests. First of all, we tested that multi-turn option in the position control does work. We tested that the torque control does work. And we also looked at the backlash and the torque. The RMD X8 has a backlash of plus minus 5 arc minutes, which is exactly the value in the documentation. And the torque which we measured is 11 Newton meter. This is lower than the peak torque, but this is a torque which is limited by the current. So in the firmware there is a limit on this torque. But you can override this limit by changing the firmware. This is quite easy to do because on the website of this company you can download the program for this. The second actuator is RMD X8 Pro. It has super low backlash. I don't know if it's my model or it's uh, really better this Pro version than the normal version. At the beginning I thought that they're gonna have the same backlash, but at least in my case this Pro version has super small backlash. I should say that it's less than two arc minutes. In my opinion, I was not able to measure it. With the current limit of the firmware, the maximum torque which we get from the position control mode is 12.5 Newton meters. But we also tested the torque mode and in this torque mode there is no the limitation on current. We was easily able to increase the torque up to the 30 Newton meters. And this is not the maximum because I did not push the joystick on my Arduino to the maximum. Yeah, for me it's like really nice actuators. I know that they are a little bit expensive, but I think this is the only disadvantage which I found of these actuators. Thank you for watching my video till the end. Don't forget to like this video, to share this video and to put the comment. Or you can put even several comments, like this is gonna be even better. And also don't forget to subscribe to my channel. This is really important because I wanna, I wanna more subscribers. I'm a greedy guy. And also you can support my channel via PayPal or through the Patreon. All the links in the description to this video. And here there is the names of all the people who are supporting me via Patreon. This is the best people and thanks to these people there is this video and thanks to these people I will continue with another videos and with another builds with another cool stuff. Brave new world is coming. Robotics is here. Good luck with your projects and see you next time.